guys. Welcome to the Super Bowl Post Show. It is your boy, Stephen Heyman, your host. And today we will be talking about the WandaVision show. So uh, basically, I do have a couple of theories I do want to talk about. Um, some stuff that I peeped in episode one and two. Episode one is going to be a little short. Episode two is going to be a little longer explanation. But yeah, let's just uh, get right into it. So if you don't know what, what WandaVision is about, I have a theory on how this has happened. Um, I'm probably going to be wrong or right. Who knows? But I'm I'm shooting. So um, what I think happened is Wanda is trying to cope with the depression of losing vision. And I believe it's piled on top of the loss of her brother and Asia Ultron and her family. And she has been driven so crazy that it has led her to make this alternate reality, which is her dream of what her envision could have been or Maybe not of her dream of what her envision could have been, because this is very like, you know, 1950s vibe. But, you know, um, I had the thought of, you know, since she was in Sokovia, uh, maybe these shows, they're shows that bring her comfort in times of trouble, when in times of depression, like in Civil War, when she had to deal with the weight of killing innocent people on accident, trying to save Captain America from crossbones when he had the bomb, you know, um, things like the Sokovia stuff. Things like watching her parents die, things like her in a Pietro sitting next to a missile, which also has a uh, Easter egg with that I'm going to talk about later. But, you know, these type of shows gave her comfort, and I believe that this is why we are seeing this, this, this 1950s, the Bewitch style, and the 1960s show, you know, um, show vibe. And um, as, you, you, as you guys know, if you don't know, we're going to go through each decade on each episode, so that should be interesting. But, you know, um, I do believe that this is a fragment of her imagination, I guess, or her creating this all alternate reality. Um, or someone else is controlling it. Or they, Wanda and the person controlling it both have control because Wanda does show that she has some kind of control in this alternate reality. So let's just get right into episode one, some stuff that I've seen. Um, let's just go to the end of the episode when things really matter. I'm kidding. So at the end of episode one, um, Mr. Hart, okay, Vision's boss, uh, he was asking the questions, got very angry, started challenging Wanda on Vision, a lot of stuff, really Wanda, and out of nowhere, he started choking. And Vision doesn't, Vision and Wanda don't just jump to save him, like they're heroes, when they jump to save him, they didn't do it. They kind of sat and waited, and Vision didn't jump to save him until Wanda tells him to. And with that, that right there showed me, it showed me that Vision isn't all the way reserved. He isn't alive yet, or he might be, but not to the extent that he was when he had the Infinity Stone. He has some type of restraint holding him back, or he's not real at all. You know, it's kind of like she didn't mind watching Mister Hart choke. You know, like. And this is a theme that you're going to see also when I talk about the second episode that, like, when someone challenges her, they get hurt. When someone questions the reality, when someone questions reality, they end up getting hurt. And that is really um, is really something to show. But, yeah, and it's something that, that you guys will see, you know, um, as in episode two. I'll talk about it a little bit more, but I'm not going to touch it as heavy um, in this episode. So next. um. Next, we all let's talk about the ad. So we did see a Stark, um, a Stark Industries type ad, I guess you could say. Yeah, Stark Industries ad. And um, basically, guys, the ad was really like a uh, a toaster. And if you and a lot of people already talked about this already, but if you guys didn't read Easter eggs, the toaster made the same sound as the repulsor beam, like Iron Man's. Um, sorry, I just had a freaking. Uh, shake earlier and I have a little chocolate on my finger <laughs> but um I had the repulsor beam from Iron Man like the pew, that's not how it sounds but that's my imagination of how it sounds and also if you look on the um the toaster it was a beeping red light beep 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 and it, it took a minute like it wasn't just like beep 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 and the toast came up it was like beep 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 and you see the girl in the commercial her eyes go like this like, she looks down, like, what's going on, fam? Like, we're waiting, fam. And it comes up. But this also uh, bring, brings us back to the story of in Sokovia with Pietro and Wanda, right? Uh, their parents died in a big explosion. 
And then basically uh, there was a missile right next to them that said Stark Tech or Stark Industries, and it kept beeping, and they kept waiting waiting for it to beep. Like the, if, if you watch Age of Ultron, they tell this story. And um, I believe that in this whole commercial – also showed me that this alternate reality isn't just Wanda's dream of what her ambition could have been through these shows. It's also her trauma. It's all like this is grief, loss, and trauma. This is what this alternate reality is. It's not just what she what she wanted it to be. No, what what she wants it to be. It is a trauma, you know. And um, it's really a deep, um, a really it's a deep emotional type of PTSD, I guess, that Wanda's going through now that I think about it, you know? And so yeah, it's real deep, bro. Like if you really look in, if you really look into it, this is, it's really a lot of deep cut stuff going on. If, if you, if you've watched, like if you watch the MCU progress and you watch these movies, there's a lot of connections, you know, you got to really be attentive and read the Easter eggs, you know? And um, are those Wanda's parents in the ad? Good question. I don't know. Might be. I hope not. I really hope they retcon her and make her a mutant. I don't like this inhuman crap. We have the X-Men. Let's make this chick a mutant. Like, let's just get it over with already. I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like Ray J doing his hat change. So, now let's get into episode two. Let's get into episode two. So, number one, we see Wonder Serial. Wonder Man? I don't know. Let's, I, I hope. I would love to see Wonder Man, but kind of a weird thing to put, you know? So, let's talk about the red helicopter, though. So if you guys remember, Wanda walked outside and saw a red helicopter sitting on top of a bush. And um, basically, uh, that was actually really weird because it was black and white. And the only thing that showed color was the bush. I mean, was the helicopter. So my theory is that this helicopter tried to fly into this uh, universe. Apparently, if you saw the trailer, this is really a bubble that she's really stuck in. I'm going to call it an alternate. They try to fly into this alternate reality and they end up becoming a toy. I don't know if Wanda did this or the people behind the scenes did this, but this obviously is showing us that when something tries to enter inside, they either become a part of the story or they become something else. They become something. And I'm guessing all the people in the helicopter that try to penetrate the war- this alternate reality died so- because of this toy. Because now the helicopters are toy. So those those are that's really my theory about the red helicopter. I know a lot of people were talking about it, you know, Iron Man's colors. I don't really think it has anything to do with that. I really don't. I just think it was just colors. It has sword on it, so I really don't believe that has anything to do with Tony Stark at all. Um now let's also uh while we're here talk about Agnes. Um, Agnes is really weird, man. Agnes is really weird. She's first in episode one, she was talking about seduct seducing vision to have sex, right? Now obviously, um, and then the next episode, she's talking to Wanda about having kids. Now she's talking to them about sex and kids, right? They have sex in the beginning of the episode, right? When they combine beds or whatever. And now Agnes is pushing the pregnancy. It's like it's funny how she's pushing these steps to having kids, you know. It's really weird because you guys will know Wanda's kids are really powerful children and they play a big part in the Marvel universe. So Agnes might push her to have kids, maybe to protect the kids. I don't know. From someone. Could be Mephisto. I don't see Mephisto being in this this series, but I believe in Doctor Strange Mephisto is going to pop up because if you guys remember, there's a line that says devil. They say devil in the details. And then she says something to the degree of like it's more than details, something like that. Like Mephisto might have something to do with this. And maybe maybe more in Doctor Strange of the multiverse, maybe, but weird, uh, weird hint right there. And they all keep saying for the children, which is another hint, which is which makes it funny to why Wanda Vision end up getting pregnant, or Wanda end up getting pregnant, is because they do this whole talent show for the children, and they keep saying it, you know, and um. Then we have Geraldine, a.k.a. Monica Rambeau. Um, when Wanda asked what her name was, she came up. It seemed like she came up with her name. It seemed like she didn't really have a set name. She, it feels like she just made it up off the top of her head. And she even said, I don't know what I'm doing here, which also rises up some questions because, you know, her mom, I'm pretty sure she was a part of S.H.I.E.L.D. at a point because, you know, if you watch Captain Marvel 1 and all that, you know, she's a pilot. And it seems like she... um. 
basically like is spying on Wanda or trying to stop this somehow or trying to get gather intel somehow. But she's also in the story. It like it seems like her, she's like one foot in this thing, one foot out, trying to keep her sanity throughout this episode it doesn't seem like she's like 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 an automated person like everyone else she's not a part of this thing she's faking i believe and um yeah it just seems like she's not trying to be noticed at all so that's someone that you guys should keep an eye keep an eye out for in episode three now let's talk about dotty now agnes told wanda that Dottie's basically the head of the town and i think that's for a reason i think agnes and Dottie are witches and i believe this for the children crap is Dottie and Agnes casting a spell on Wanda to have a kid. And also, if you guys peep, right, another serious moment happens, right? Wanda and Dottie are having a conversation, and Dottie is alluding to the fact that Wanda and Vision are dangerous. Like, you know, like you said, something's wrong with them. And what happens, right? Uh, Dottie, they get serious, and then Dottie somehow cuts her hand. Someone else gets hurt when they're making Wanda uncomfortable when they're challenging her. That's another sign that when someone challenges Wanda, a sense when a sense of reality comes, someone gets hurt. Maybe Wanda is like changing the course of what's happening by hurting them to distract them from, from realizing that they're in this fake reality or someone behind the scenes is doing this. And there's also a radio call that says, what, who is doing this to you, Wanda? Or could she be doing this to herself? You know? But it also, but every time something goes awry, to me, it just seems like Wanda resets everything. It does. And it's like wherever Wanda is, she is breaking down the reality, and the people around her take a break from the alternate reality that they're set in, and it becomes real for a split second. Just rewatch those two scenes. Rewatch the scene with Mr. Hart at the table when he starts snapping and Dottie. And just and look how the even the camera angle, she, like, like the whole show is like a 1950s, 1960s type camera style. When the serious moments happens, the camera changes. Just watch it. You'll see the camera change and the picture becomes a little bit more clear. I think that is symbolizing that it's becoming reality for a moment. That's my theory. That's my theory. So yeah, that, that's really all I have for um and let's and also I, I thought, you know, with, with the B guy. It might be AIM, but probably S.W.O.R.D. again. Somebody from S.W.O.R.D. was entering the, the premises, and again, she freaking changed. She reset it, and and then it went back to them in the house. She's pregnant, and, they're, and, then, and then the color begins to fill the whole reality, the whole room, whatever. And then the episode ends. So, guys, that's really all I got. That's my theories. Um, I'm going to have more on uh, Friday. You know, I'm going to have more after I watch it on Friday, and I'm going to give another recap and review, and then I'll give you my other, my other opinions and theories on what's going on. So thank you guys, and have a nice day, and RIP to my boy Chadwick Bozeman.